Hello, this is a special story, mostly for my grandchildren, for Nora and Benjamin and Jonah and Eden and Elena Joy, and for Ellis and Anderson and Collins and Marie, and for Zion and for Stoney and for Gigi. These are, this is an Easter story and it's called Jesus is Risen. These are the palm tree books, and I want to read the Easter story to my grandchildren, but all children can listen in and enjoy with us. This is about Easter. It was very early in the morning. You could just pick out the shape of the cross on the top of the hill. There it stood, grim and bare. Jesus had died on it. A little way down the hill was a garden. But it but was it was a bit wild and overgrown, and in one corner was a tomb. That's where Jesus was put when he died. Into the garden came a woman. See, there's the woman. Her name was Mary Magdalene. She was one of Jesus' friends. She wanted to make sure everything was all right at the tomb. What a shock she had. The big stone blocking the entrance was rolled away. And when she looked inside the tomb, the body of Jesus wasn't there. Mary Magdalene was so upset, she ran straight back to the town. And she bumped into Peter and John, two of Jesus' best friends. Oh, she cried, an awful thing has happened. Can anything be any worse? asked Peter gloomily. Yes, it can. Someone has taken Jesus away from the tomb. Peter and John didn't stop to ask any more questions. They picked up their coats and ran as fast as they could to the tomb in the garden. Mary Magdalene ran back too, crying all the way. Peter and John went inside the tomb. It was dark and eerie, but they could soon see enough that it was quite empty. See, it's empty. <clears throat> the strangest thing was that the clothes which Jesus' body had been wrapped up in were folded there neatly. What do you make of this, said Peter and John to each other. John was in a whirl. Then he thought, I'm sure Jesus said something like this would happen, and they hurried back to Jerusalem to tell the others. Meanwhile, Mary Magdalene sat outside the tomb. How sad she felt. Then she looked inside the tomb again and saw two angels. Why are you crying, the angels asked her. Jesus has been taken away, she said, and I don't know where he is. <clears throat> Just then, somebody behind her said, Mary. It was only after he spoke that Mary realized it was Jesus. Master, said Mary, and ran to hug him. She was so happy to see him alive again. Look, there he is. He's alive. The trouble was, when Mary Magdalene told all of Jesus' friends that she had seen him alive with her very own eyes, they didn't believe her. They were so sad and puzzled, you see, except for Peter and John, who weren't sure. Well, you might be right, they said, clapping her on the shoulder, but it might be a dream. Now, a little later that day, Cleopas and a friend set off from Jerusalem on the road to a village called Emmaus. See, there they are, walking on the road to Emmaus. Jesus came up and joined them. You know it was Jesus, but they didn't. What's up with you, he asked. They said, you must be the only man in Jerusalem who doesn't know what's happened. Our friend Jesus, <clears throat> a great prophet, was killed. What's more, his body has vanished. And would you believe Mary Magdalene said she saw him alive. You are silly, said Jesus. Didn't you know this all had to happen like this, just as the prophet said? And he told them of the parts about himself in the Jewish writings and what they meant. It was almost evening when they reached Emmaus. Stay and have something to eat with us, said Cleopas. So Jesus did, and he took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. And suddenly they realized <clears throat> who it was. It was Jesus. But Jesus had vanished from their sight. See, he's trying to eat bread with them. He's sitting right there. But then after he broke the bread, he vanished away. <clears throat> they all forgot about supper. We better get back to Jerusalem and tell the others, said Cleopas to his friend. 
So they ran all the way back into the city, along the back streets, up the stairs to the room where Jesus' friends were. We've just seen Jesus, they shouted. <clears throat> and we talked to him for a long time. There was an absolute uproar, and everyone was talking and shouting. I don't believe it, said Matthew. I told you so, said Mary. There was such noise, and everyone was so excited. So excited they didn't notice right away that Jesus was there in the middle of them. Peace be with you all, he said. And you could hear a pin drop. Peter was the first to speak. Is it really you, he asked? Of course it is. Jesus showed them his hands, his feet and his side. Look where I was hurt when they put me on the cross. They knew for sure it was Jesus. And everyone jumped for joy. Look, there he is. And everybody's cheering. Now Thomas, who was another of Jesus' friends, wasn't there at the time. When he came along the next day, he didn't believe a word of it. You must be joking, he said. Not a chance. Unless Jesus appears to me as well and I can touch him, I'll bet you're just playing a joke on me. A few days later, that's exactly what happened. Jesus' friends were all eating supper together, and there was Jesus. Peace be to you all, he said. Then he called Thomas. Come on, he said. Touch me and see for yourself, Thomas. So Thomas did, and he had to admit it was Jesus after all, as real as the day he was born. Later on, some of Jesus' friends decided to go fishing on Lake Tiberius, Lake Tiberius. They were out at night because that's the best time to catch fish. But they didn't catch one fish. It's morning, said Peter. Let's give up. I'm hungry. Then a voice called them from shore, but they didn't know it was Jesus. Ahoy, why don't you throw your nets on the other side? They did, and there were so many fish, they had to pull the nets into the shore with them. Look, said John, it's Jesus. Peter was so excited, he swam to the shore. Jesus had a fire going. When the others had come into land, he said, come on, let's have breakfast. So they cooked some fish, Jesus took some bread out, and they had a great breakfast one of the best they ever had. Soon after Jesus went to join his Father in heaven, soon after that, Jesus went to join his Father in heaven, but he promised that he would be with anyone who was his friend always. There's Jesus having breakfast with his disciples to prove that he's alive. So, children, Jesus rose from the dead. That's what Easter is all about. He died on the cross, and then three days later, he raised from the dead. And he was the Son of God. So we should always trust him, pray, pray to him, and keep him in our hearts at all times. Love you, kids. Bye.